Hi, I'm Tim, and today we're going to be building an AI playlist generator. In Java, using Deep Learning 4J, we're going to take in a song title, and by understanding the semantic meaning of that song title, as well as the song lyrics, we're going to use it to build our own custom playlists. So before we get started, there's a couple things you're going to need. So first of all, you're going to need Java installed on your machine. After that, you're going to need Maven version 3.9.6 or higher. You're going to need a MongoDB Atlas cluster deployed. So for the data set we're using, it's quite a large data set, and it will exceed the limit of the M0 free tier cluster. What you can do is you can use a larger cluster, or you can just concatenate the data set and use less songs, for your example. After that, we're going to need an embedding model. So this is how we're going to vectorize our data. By vectorizing our data and storing it in MongoDB, it allows us to search it semantically, so search it by meaning, using MongoDB's Atlas vector search. Now, for this version, we're using the 300 dimensions. It's important to know how many dimensions you're using in your model for embedding your data, as you will need that when you're creating the search index on your MongoDB Atlas. Now, after that, what we're going to need is we're going to need your actual song lyrics. So what I did is I found a data set online just on Kaggle. I'll drop a link to it down below. And it just contains a bunch of songs over the last couple of decades. Now, as you'll see, it's nine gigabytes, quite a large one. It has a bunch of data we need, such as the titles of the songs, such as potentially the artists, and definitely the song lyrics. It also has a bunch of data we don't need, so what we will be doing in our application is we're going to be cleaning the data before we store it in our MongoDB Atlas cluster. Once you have all that set up, it's time to actually get to creating our application. Okay, so for this tutorial, it will not be live coding. There is a good bit of code here, a good bit of your classic Java Everything takes a thousand lines to do something very simple, but because of that, I think it's best that I'll go through all the code. There will be the GitHub repository for all of this, as well as the written tutorial, which you can follow along and copy the code snippets as we go. And that should make everyone's eyes a little bit easier, save you squinting at the screen and watching my very, very slow typing. But first thing we're going to do is we'll have a look in our resources folder. So you'll see here that I have our song lyrics.csv as well as our embedding model in our resources folder. Using the application's code, this is where it's looking for those files. If you want to change where they're located, you will just need to change that in the code. As well as that, we have our application's property. Now, here, the first thing you're going to need to do is add your MongoDB URI. This is my one here with our top secret password. If you're following along at home as well, this cluster won't exist anymore. You're going to have to create your own one. But beyond that one, the music database and the songs collection, we're just specifying what we want the database and the collection to be called in MongoDB. As well as that, we're going to have the class path just for our embedding model. All of these shouldn't need to be changed, just the URI, which you can get from MongoDB Atlas through the UI. And just by clicking collect or connect on your cluster, you'll be able to get this. Now, once we have that, next thing we're going to look at is our pom.xml. This is just where we have all of our dependencies. I'll go through a few of what we need to get started. So we'll give some focus here to some dependencies over others. We do have Spring Boot here, that's just for creating the API. And then after that, we do have Jakarta. So that's just again for annotating. After that, we have our ND4J. That is what we're going to be using for some of our numerical processing in our Deep Learning 4J implementation. Then we also have DataVec for the same reason, working with our data. Uh, with our data vectorization, which we will need for using the model, for embedding our documents, embedding our songs to get those vectors. We then have Deep Learning 4J. So Deep Learning 4J we're using to, to import our model and then to create these embeddings so we can send it on to MongoDB. For that, we have our Deep Learning 4J core as well as the NLP for our text processing. Then we have Apache Common CSV. This is just for reading in our CSV file. And lastly, of course, we have our MongoDB dependencies. So these are just there to allow us to connect to our MongoDB database using the Java driver. Now, I do have some further dependencies, just the Deep Learning 4J for data sets, as well as some dependencies I have for testing. All of this, again, can be copied from the written tutorial. Now, after that, we're going to start looking at what models we're using. So for this application, we do have two models, basically. We have our song model and our playlist model. So the song model is what we will use to contain our data on the song, such as the title, artist, uh, or any other metadata you decide you want to deliver along with the playlist. Of course, we're also going to have the lyrics and the embedding for the lyrics. So the embedding we're storing just as a list of double. 
it will be a list of these floating point numbers that are used to represent the data in that nth dimensional space, 300 dimensions in our case. Now, after that, we also have our playlist model. So our playlist model, what this does is it just contains the playlist name, which is the name you will be giving it. So whatever you decide, 20s, noir, detective, uh, sad girl, wistful, Wednesday afternoon, any name you give that you want to capture the semantic meaning of, and then of course, generate that list of songs. Now, of course, the playlist is just used for delivering the data to the user. We're not actually storing this in MongoDB. What we are going to be storing is our song. So this will generate an underscore ID to store in MongoDB, but we don't need that on our application end for this very simple implementation. After that, we can look at our MongoDB config. So our MongoDB config is how we're going to be connecting to the database. So of course here, it's super simple to get started. All we need is our Mongo client and our MongoDB URI. So with all of this, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a bean that will create our Mongo client. And then after that, it's configured with our connection URI. We can use that for connecting in our repository layer. So our Mongo repository is the layer that we're gonna to use to access our MongoDB database. In here, we're gonna have our Mongo client and we're gonna have our database and collection name that we've set in our application properties. Now this is going to contain two functions. It's going to have a method for storing the songs in our database, as well as querying the songs based off the semantic meaning. So for storing the songs, it's going to do it automatically when we load in our CSV. We have all that logic in a service that we'll be going on to next. But for that, it's just going to take the lyrics, the title, the artist, and the embedding for the song. So the vectors, it's going to push it into our collection. And it's going to, of course, call this automatically from our service. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have to be able to perform vector searches on the database. So Atlas Vector Search is how MongoDB performs the semantic searches on our data. What this means is basically words that are similar, have similar meaning, or have similar intent, are, be, are able to be used for searching. So if I'm talking about ice cream and I'm searching up Sundays, ice cream will come up. Now, with that general idea, what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to give us a method for giving a playlist name, could be whatever playlist you want, could be Hopecore, Dreamcore, Sunday evening, and it will go through the lyrics of the song and it will try to match songs based off the lyrics that capture a similar semantic meaning. It does all this, of course, with our Atlas Vector Search and it's gonna use an index that we're gonna create later. Now for this, we do have some uh, conditions. We have our index name, which we're gonna be creating later, but I have it hard coded in as vector index. You're gonna to need to pay attention to this. If you're going to change it on your collection, you're gonna to to be able to, to give it its own name here. As well as that, we have the number of candidates to consider and importantly, our limit. So this will basically be our playlist length. So I just set it here for 10. It will work perfectly fine for this demo. If you wanted a longer playlist, put it up to 50. If you want a shorter, put it up down to five and it will just get However many you ask for, it will get that many similar songs. Of course, it will order the songs based on how similar they are. Now, once it performs that, it will then convert these retrieved documents into our songs, and we're going to be able to return that in our API. So now that we have all that covered, so that's basically how we interact with our MongoDB database, it's time to talk about the actual business logic. So we're going to go to our service class next. Okay, so we've looked at our models, our repositories, and now we're gonna focus on our service. So the service is where the real meat and potatoes of the application is, it's where all the business goes down, our AI stuff. What we're doing in here is we're using our embeddings model to generate the vectors for our data, but we're also gonna to be tokenizing our data and removing any stop words. So I'll go through what that means, and for this application, because it is quite a hefty bit of code here, it's a few things going on. If you wanna run this at home, check out our GitHub repo where I have all this code there, as well as the written tutorial where I go through it step by step if you want to copy the code snippets as we go through it. But we'll start at, this, at the start here and we'll work our way through it. Basically what we're doing is we're taking in our embeddings model and we're loading that. So our embeddings model is how we're actually going to uh, generate these embeddings for our, or generate these vectors for our data. So what we do is we're going to be tokenizing our data. So tokenizing our song lyrics, which basically means breaking up our lyrics. At the moment, it's in this big long string. We're gonna be breaking up 
it up into individual words. We're going to be generating a vector for each word, and then we're going to get an average vector for the song. An important step in this will be getting rid of stop words. Now you'll see here, I have a list of stop words, the, uh, and, and, basically words that don't provide a lot of context, the actual song we'll see repeating a lot, and we don't want it to skewer our vector to something that doesn't provide a lot of semantic meaning. So these stop words, I've loaded it in manually. It's just a big long list of boring words, but there are different libraries available. The libraries are usually for Python or JavaScript, but you're able to convert stuff and bring them into Java. I just have a basic one here. We're also going to be removing bracketed text. Basically, I do know this data set, and in this data set, there's square brackets, and in it will say stuff like chorus, verse one, intro by whatever DJ. This, again, won't provide any semantic meaning to our vectors, so we're just removing it, we're cleaning up our data set. We're going to be tokenizing the text, which is, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to be breaking up the words into indiv individual words to create the embeddings. We're going to be getting the embeddings for each individual word, and then we'll be averaging it. So we'll get our average word vectors for the lyrics. Now, once we have that, we do have a couple of helper functions down here, just converting between different data types. We're working with these as a data type specific to ND4J, but we're going to be storing it as a double list in our MongoDB application as it's a supported BSON type. But yes, once we have all that there, we of course have our embed text, which is what we're going to be calling when we're either passing in the this Kaggle data set or when we're creating a embedding for our generated playlist titles. Now, now that we have our embedding service gone through, we're going to look at the actual playlist service. Now, our playlist generator service is sort of the last piece in our puzzle. It's what allows us to take in that playlist name and generate a playlist of semantically similar songs. So what we do here is we just create a playlist embedding. It passes in the playlist name and it generates an embedding from that from our embedding service. And then of course, if that fails, we do just have some error handling here. Although not an entirely fully fledged application, this is perfectly fine for our demo. And then lastly, we're going to query our database. So we looked earlier in our repository, we had our Atlas Vector Search Aggregation Pipeline which allowed us to get our semantically similar songs. You need the embedding to run that nearest neighbor search against the vectors in your database. So we pass in that embedded playlist and we get a list of what we called similar songs, or in our case, it's our playlist. So with all that in place, we do have just a little controller put up. Very, very simple controller. What it does is it allows us to load our sample data and create a new playlist. Now, with all of this together, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compile the application and get it running. I'll come back once I have all of that, and we're going to look at actually loading our data, querying our database, and of course, creating that vector search index on our collection. So now I've compiled my application and have it running. So it's running on port 8080. First thing to do is actually load our data. So I have a curl command here that you're going to be able to get from that tutorial I've linked below but it's basically just to our load sample data endpoint along with the file name we're loading in. So our song lyrics.csv, that's in our resources folder. So if I hit enter on this, now this will take a good amount of time. It's loading about nine gigabytes of songs into our database. As well as that, it's gonna create an index on all of our songs so we can perform our vector searches. This will take, depending on your internet connection, could be anywhere from five to 20 minutes. I mean, technically it could go forever depending on how bad your internet connection is, but we're gonna leave this. We're gonna come back when we have enough data loaded. If you get bored and just wanna test your application, leave it running for five, 10 minutes, then you can cut it. You should have plenty there to get a good idea of how this works. But yep, I'm gonna give you a break here and we'll be back when everything's loaded. So while our data is loading, now's a good time to actually add that vector search index. What we can do is we can go to our music database with the songs collection, which will be created automatically while the data is being added into the database and we can go to the search index fields in our collection. So if we open up this tab here, what we'll see is at the moment, there should be nothing created. Now MongoDB will automatically have an index on the underscore ID fields. You can't create, modify, or delete that one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a search index and we're gonna use the Atlas vector search. So the JSON editor. Now in here, what we're gonna do is we're going to place the index on the embedding field. 
we're going to take the default vector index name. The type, of course, is vector. And then in here is where we're going to add embedding. After that, we need the number of dimensions. So this is the number of dimensions that our model uses. If you remember earlier, our model uses 300 if you're following along with me. If you're using your own model, just pay attention to this. Now, after that, we need our similarity function. So similarity function is basically how it performs the similarity search on the data, how it compares what the nearest neighbors are. What we're gonna use for ours is just a dot product. Now you could test different functions, see what results you get, but this should be absolutely fine for us. Now capital P there. Okay, so dot product. What we'll do next is we'll hit next. Review it, make sure everything looks good to you. And once you have that, you're gonna hit create search index. This will take a moment to perform it on all of the documents in our database. It will create it on any new documents added, so you don't need to wait for all your data to be loaded before you create this. So now we have our data loaded in the database. Our index is created on our MongoDB documents. And what we're going to do next is we're just going to perform a curve request to generate our playlist. Now, I've gone for the playlist name, Sad Girl Wistful Friday Evening. This is one that was given to me by the Spotify Daylist. Uh, recommendations so we should get something along those lines but if we go here I also just added a pipe JQ this is just to format our JSON output we are going to be getting the whole documents that includes all the embeddings so it is going to be quite a hefty output but if we run this here and you'll see we should have our output so I'll just open this up so we can get a better look and let's see what songs are in our playlist if we scroll up here past all our embeddings what do we have so first, Cry Baby by CeeLo Green. Definitely say, say that fits the Sad Girl Wistful Evenings. What else? That Kind of Girl, DC Talk. Really locking in on that girl. Again, it's semantic search. It won't be perfect if you're looking for actual vibes of the songs. Of course, you're going to have to take in things like how the song actually sounds. Something you could do to build upon this project is to add a method for capturing the semantic meaning. Based off that, I know we all know the difference between folk music and pop music just by listening to it. Singing in the rain, definitely say that one works. Let's maybe go up to the top of our output and see what we have up here. And Lonely by Akon, definitely hidden that. And all the way past all of these numbers. We have When a Woman Loves by R. Kelly. Okay, I'd say that definitely captures at least the semantic meaning of the title based off the lyrics. But again, there's definitely ways you can build upon this. Better you or better embedding models. You could have your own custom embedding models. You can take in stuff like using the Spotify API. You might be able to take in a user's listing history and create your own implementations based off that. But this is a very simple implementation just to show you how to use Deep Learning 4J with MongoDB and get an idea of how to make these custom playlist generators. So in this tutorial, we've built our playlist generator using AI to create our custom playlists with Deep Learning 4J, MongoDB Atlas, as well as MongoDB Atlas Vector Search. If you found this tutorial useful, make sure to head over to the MongoDB Developer Center. We have the written version of this tutorial as well as plenty of other. If you want to learn more, you can also check out the MongoDB YouTube channel. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'll be there to check it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.